Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the second uh, session of today's questions and answers. I'm your host, uh, Amjid Muhammad. I'm with you till uh, just about 8 o'clock, 8 p.m. this evening here in Bradford. Well, 8 p.m. <laughs> throughout the whole of UK. It's not just 8 p.m. here in Bradford, but I said Bradford because I'm talking to you from Iqra Studios uh, of uh, Manchester Road here uh, in Bradford. And um, the number to call for your questions is 01274. 214299 that's 01274 214299 if you wish to email then it's q and a at iqra.tv that's q and a at iqra.tv so please do get your calls in i had a few questions which i left which i'm now going to deal with now and uh, and then inshallah we will be able to um, uh, pick up and finish the two groups and hopefully have time to spare. So I will ask my colleague shortly to check in our bag of emails. I still have about four or five questions to answer. But after that, I will ask my colleague uh, to dig into his bag of emails uh, to find some for us so that we can deal with them as well. But let's just clear my groups first. Uh, it gives us a nice um, day off. Oh, we've got a call waiting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear caller. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Abdullah, how are you? I'm good, alhamdulillah. How are you? I'm very well. I was waiting for you. I was going to call you out, as they say. You know, there's this thing in it, what young people say, <laughs> call you out. I was going to call you out, but then I thought, you know what? Maybe Friday is a relaxing day off. You know, I won't. He's been regular, mashallah. Uh, no. Maybe he's going to call. But anyway, how are you? I'm good, alhamdulillah. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Jazak Makhair for asking. Was school good today? Oh, uh, yeah. And Madrasa? Oh, uh, yeah. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So go on then. What have you got for me today? Um, today my question is, um, I heard a rumour by that, um, that, you know in Sikhism, how you have the ten gurus. You heard a rumour? What? Sorry, I, I missed the next part. Um, if you, I've heard a rumour that, you know the ten gurus in uh, Sikhism? Oh, yes. Uh, that they were real and they used to preach Islam in this too. That they used to be, they were real and they used to preach Islam? Yes. Okay, fantastic. Jazakallah khayna. You're asking the question, yes? Assalamualaikum. Yes. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, young man. Okay, so uh, I like that he said he heard a rumor. Uh, but, you know, it's, so the ten gurus, now we know from uh, Sikhism, um, now Sikhism, the basis of Sikhism was that um, Muslims, unfortunately, got too embroiled in um, being Muslim. <laughs> I know that might sound strange. And they'd forgot their religion, Islam. And Hindus got too focused on being Hindus and forgot their religion of Hinduism. What, they, what, we, what I mean by that is that they lost their ways in terms of the message that they brought. So Sikhism came from Sikhna. You yani need to learn. That's the, that was the basis of it. And it was a religion of learning. And it was never meant to be a new religion. It was meant to be a, a call to get back to the roots. And therefore, you find within the, um, the Guru Nanak, you find within the, 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 their holy book, uh, many passages ascribed to Muslims and also passages ascribed to Hinduism. And you'll see a mixture of those faiths. So not eating meat, uh, being vegetarian is very much uh, within the Hindu, Hindu tradition. Wearing a, a turban, an amama, as we know, is very much in the uh, is Islamic tradition. Having a beard uh, is within the Islamic tradition. So, so you'll see lots of, and also terminology. Um, you'll find within Sikhism it has both Islamic terminology and Hindu terminology. So yes, the Islam played a key part in what has now become a religion, Sikhism, a very new religion, only a, a few hundred years old, and, uh, and, and that plays a part. But to say categorically that Sikhs uh, professed only a, a religion of Islam, that, that's not correct. In fact, there were many times when the Sikhs came against Muslims in, in, in war, in battles. Uh, so clearly they had different ideologies and different 
uh, ways. And as we see now, it's a completely different religion. It has its own practices. It has its own holy book. It has its own uh, uh, temples, places of worship. Uh, and, and, and now we're starting to see, you know, differences emerging. So, so th those are the changes we've seen. But, you know, the men who, who, who then became known as the gurus, they were men of religion. Uh, I cannot say of which particular religious affiliation they were. Uh, obviously, Sikhs will say that they were actually Sikhs. They weren't of any religious affiliation. Uh, many Muslims will say that actually there's many of them that had Islamic practices. And I'm sure likewise the Hindus uh, will say that they actually had Hindu practices. Um, so, so that's as much as, a, as an understanding we can get from there. Anyway, we have another caller who's calling on 01274 214299. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear caller. Wa alaikum assalam, my dear brother. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Jazak khair. It's been a while it's since uh, I've not talked to you since prior, before Eid, or did you ring on Eid? I, I, I tried to ring, but unfortunately, you were very busy when you were with one of the other brothers uh, uh, sharing. Uh, uh, show together. But, ah. uh, may I wish you, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted all your abadah, all your fasting. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted all your zikrs. Ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enhance your knowledge. And please do not retire yet. You're too early to <laughs> retire. Oh, shucks. <laughs> okay. Exactly. I'll, I'll, post, I'll postpone that for a few years, shall I? <laughs> There I was, there I was looking at, there I was looking at, you know, sitting on the porch and watching the sun go down and all the rest of it. So, okay. And the grandfather, you, the grandfather's you, slippers I'll have to put away then, won't I? You don't need to do that. Just come to North Wales. You will it, enjoy it. Inshallah. Okay. I, I look forward to it. Jazakul khair. The reason I'm ringing is that one of the brothers before, before the break, or a, it was a brother who asked, uh, are you allowed to read the Quran? Uh, you know, ah, with, part with, of with, your aura. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, uh, removing, removing the shirt. Uh, removing the shirt. Yes. Just the shirt or... Does just just, just the shirt, just the shirt. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. The, I, I, missed, I, I joined the program while sure. you were answering his question. Back sure, sure. Because the, I, 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 it just confused my brain altogether that how could anybody read the Holy Quran? Ah, no, I... Because yeah. you know, if it was only purely the shape... It is, because I think wherever the, ch wherever the chap lives, he lives in a nice place. It's 38 degrees Celsius, he was saying. <laughs> and uh, it's no... It's, and and, the, and there's a and, and the, even with a fan on full blast, uh, it's not really dropping the temperature. At all so clearly he has to remove his upper garment, uh, and probably most of the day he'll have to do that. And he was listening. There was another question that came in about uh, the aura generally. That you know, should the satar and the aura be covered when one is undercover in in a, in a duvet? Uh, or, for example, if, you know, uh, uh, and that was a separate question. So I think you've kind of caught the back end of one and, and the front end of the other and, and maybe maybe right. join them together. Yeah, true. But the, the, my, my little thinking and my little request is when Marshall, uh, by the way, I, I, with Allah's permission, I was allowed to go for Umrah in the month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah, may Allah accept. Ameen. That's fantastic. Ameen, ameen. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your beautiful dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your dua for every mother. Ameen. Father, sister, and brother who went Ameen. to Umrah. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted our dua for the Ummat Ameen. and our dua for the human race. And may there be peace throughout the whole world. Ameen. Ameen. Fantastic Ameen. dua. Fantastic dua. You're welcome, my dear brother. Uh, you know, when you're performing Umrah, you know, what better place than Allah's rahmat is there with you? You are doing your dua. You know, one of the rituals is your right shoulder should be not covered with your. Right, so therefore, taking that into account, and you're reading the Holy Quran, you're reciting the Holy Quran, when you're doing your dua, and you're making all the zikr and all the duas, and uh, what's the difference between that and reading the Quran if you're partly uncovered? In terms of, is that considered as uh, khilaf of adab, as in, you know, with having the arm uncovered? Is, is, that, the, is that what you're asking me? Well, what I'm saying, because we are performing Umrah, performing Hajj, with part of your arm not covered, yes, sure. and sometimes you know yourself, we've only got two sheets on. Sure. Sometimes you can actually see a brother's waist as well. Which yes. Is, he hasn't done it on purpose. No, no. Due, due to the millions of brothers and sisters there, yes, yes. right? Yes. So, but what I'm trying to say, you're actually in the present of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely. In the present of the Holy Kaaba. Yes. So therefore, isn't that 
even more greater than that. May Allah forgive me if I'm wrong. Sure. Forgive me for being naive. Isn't that even greater than the miracle of the Quran? Absolutely. Okay. Jazakum khair for that question. I'll, I'll, I'll pick that up, inshallah. Thank you very much. No problem. All you take care, my brother. Assalamu alaikum. Amin, 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 amin. Um, so, Jazak Rakhir, I think I dealt with the young uh, Abdullah's question, so let's take our uh, brother from North Wales, brother from across the border, as we will say. Um, in terms of the uh, etiquettes, because this comes under etiquettes, there is certain part of the body that must be covered, and that is just below, for a, for a bloke, obviously, that is just below the navel and down to and including his knees. For a woman, her aura is her complete body, excluding her hands and excluding her face. Uh, and the face only comes under uh, covering due to fitna, due to the fact that unfortunately we live in a highly uh, sexualized world. We live in a highly uh, perverse world. Uh, and therefore, you know, no, no woman, unfortunately, is free from the glaring eyes of men leering at her. And what this does is this protects her chastity and protects her honor uh, because nobody likes to be leered at and, 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 and you know, kind of, eyes you know, drooping over people, whatever. hence that's the reason. So a man's aura is just below his navel down to his knee. Now, unfortunately, as we get older, you know, the belly starts to come out a little bit. So then tying your izal on the highest point of your, of your, of your waist is, is sometimes a bit difficult. So it slides down, and once it slides, it's a, it's a, it's a sleep, slippery slope. Uh, and then it'll slide all the way down, literally to, you know, just below above uh, one's, you know, sort of private parts. It goes all the way down. And then no matter how hard the poor chap will pull the izar open, rest it on his stomach, which is now literally halfway up his chest, a little bit of movement, and it slides back down again. And for men who aren't used to walking around in izar, it's already a challenge, okay, because we're used to trousers, uh, with either having elastic band in them or having a belt or something or having a rope in it or some type of fastener. And therefore, when our belly is out there, you know, it becomes difficult, let's put it mildly. So therefore, you know, a person will be excused. Now, we know that in the time of the Prophet, because people were so poor, they prayed just with covering of the aura between the navel and the knee. Yani, they prayed topless, shirtless. That was because they had no other garments. So that shows salah is valid. So the salah is valid. We will just say it's khilaf of adab. Okay. That if you have material, that doesn't say it becomes impermissible. That if you have material and you choose not to pray uh, by covering one's uh, body. It's, it's not wrong. A person can do that. You know, if in extreme heat. A person is praying. So this is not nothing. Else. Now, as for the, the way the Muslims, the, the men, uncover their right arm, is because when the Prophet ﷺ came back to Mecca, after he had left Medina, and he came for his uh, Umrah. Remember the first year he came? that They were stopped at Hudaybiyah, and that's when the Treaty of Hudaybiyah was signed. And the Prophet ﷺ shaved, it, sent an animal forward to the, uh, to the uh, haram for it to be slaughtered. And he sh removed his hair. And the companions removed their hair and they returned back to, uh, to Medina. And then the following year they went and they were given permission. The Makkah and the Quraysh uh, of Makkah left Makkah. And they took up uh, uh, sort of a home, rest in the, in the mountains. And they watched the Muslims. So the Prophet ﷺ said to his believers that they think that we have become weak. Because Medina's temperament was such that people lost weight. People kind of became weaker, and Makkah's temperament was very different. They, a lot of the Makkah Muslims fell ill when they arrived in Medina. Sayyidina Abu Bakr fell ill. Sayyidina Bilal fell ill. So the Prophet Islam said, is, remove your, and obviously our right arm is our hench arm, yeah, the Musal arm. So they would see the muscles of the believers, and also to walk with conviction, walk with, you know, that you're, you're, you're serious, you know, your chest out, and you you walk striding. Okay, don't kind of like sheepishly shuffle along because sheepishly shuffling along makes you look weak. Whereas having your chest out, taking purposeful strides, swinging your arms at the same time, uncovering your right arm. This is how men perform Ramal uh, in the three circuits of Tawaf, of the seven circuits. So they do that in order to show strength. 
But because the Prophet ﷺ did that, it now becomes a ritual act. So we imitate him. For example, putting your fingers in your ears when giving azan. Now when we give adhan, we give adhan in the microphone and we don't scream down the microphone, okay? The reason why we don't scream down the microphone is because the speakers will explode. So even though we might say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Now I don't need to put my fingers in my ears. I'm not screaming. This was in the times gone by when a man would climb up the uh, minaret and he would, in his loudest voice, proclaim the adhan. So that his voice would carry for a mile, a mile and a half, maybe even further. Now, because he's shouting, he's going to make himself go deaf if he's doing that five times a day. So he would take his fingers and they would act like um, ear thingies, whatever you call them. What do you call them? Ear plugs? Ear plugs. So his fingers would act like ear plugs and he would scream it out. But... We don't need to do that anymore. However, it's now become a ritual act. Ritual acts are those which have become acts of worship, which don't serve a purpose or visibly or rationally, we cannot see a purpose for them, except that they're acts of worship. Like, for example, we break wind, yani, you know, from the posterior, and we wash our arms and we wash our face and we wash our feet. What has breaking wind got to do with washing these four parts of the body? Nothing. It's a ritual act. So I hope that answered that question. And alhamdulillah, jazakum khairan for those couple of calls. Look how quickly the second session has ended. We are now running out of time. So all I can say is jazakum khairan for calling in. I appreciate all those who call in and the questions that we get on the forum. May Allah bless you all. May you have the best of weekends. And may you be ready for another week to serve the Almighty. Till next week, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.